Thanks for joining me for part four of my handle carving series. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how I carve a totem. And these little totems are relatively simple, just usually use an off cut of wood. This was actually from the bottom part of the handle that you would have seen me cut off in one of the previous videos. Making these totems is a great way to make use of all that extra scrap wood that usually just lies around and gets thrown into the trash or the burn pile. You can do something creative and make something that'll last a very long time out of something that would otherwise have been discarded and thrown away. And this one will actually be used as a lanyard bead or toggle, which makes it easier to grip onto a little something extra. So since it's already a great size, I'm just going to take down the corners with my sloyd knife and round it off. I want the totem to be relatively round and cylindrical so that I can begin to carve a face into it. So I'm just removing the rough grain, removing any axe marks, then I can move on to the next step. This is a potato peeler grip and the knife will slide off of the wooden piece and down past my thumb. It's a very safe grip. I'll be using mostly thumb pushes and potato peeler grips to remove all the material that I need to remove before I can move on to the face. Now that that's all smoothed off, it's pretty cylindrical shaped. I am going to trim off the bottom of it eventually and get it down to an appropriate size for the toggle itself. So here at this point, I'm selecting the appropriate bit size, not too large and not too small, just big enough to get the lanyard to fit through. And I'll be clamping it just firmly enough so that it doesn't move about when drilling straight through it. Marking a hole first with a pair of scissors helps the drill bit to not slip about when drilling the hole. Alright, so a few final push cuts here, and I have it at the shape that I need it to begin the face. So here, I'm doing a firm push inward to mark where the bottom of his nose will be. And then, I'll carve up to that line, and it'll chip out, creating a space underneath the nose. And the second line underneath will mark the general area of where the end of the totem will be, so I'm actually going to end up sawing that bottom part off later on. I'll be peeling up here with thumb pushes straight up to that line, and then it should chip right out. When they don't chip out, I need to push inwards underneath the nose once again, and then it's sort of a chip carving motion at that point, just a little bit up, and then chip it out with a push down 
like this. Using these simple little techniques and these simple motions throughout the carving, you can create the space for the nose, the space for the eyes, and the mouth as well. It really is that simple to create these totems. Now, using a smaller dedicated knife for small carvings is probably a lot more ideal than using a larger Mora 106 carving knife like what I'm using here, but I'm very used to using this, this knife in this way. But soon I'll be switching to the smaller knives that I got recently, which are specific to these kinds of little carvings. Because using a smaller blade, I've learned, gives you a lot more capabilities for control. And that way you can get some really nice small details that there are some really talented carvers out there that do small carvings. And I'm going to keep practicing and learn more and more about it. But for now, it'll just be these simple little totems, which I do love doing. I started doing them when I started wood carving to carry on a family tradition. So some of my family members back where my mother is from carved these little totems out of coral and they're very traditional to, to our family's background. So this is sort of my take on these little totems because I think it's great to carry on family traditions and bring old cultural traditions into the new age. Now when it comes to carving these totems, one thing I've learned is that I get the best results when keeping things simple. Sometimes I'll sit there for over an hour and fuss over the tiniest little details and the tiniest little grain trying to get it as clean as possible. Some of those do look very good. However, I find when I keep things very simple, like as you can see, under the nose is nice and flat, I didn't go too deep. So actually if I just leave that there, cut out the little slots for the eyes like I do here, chip carve up to it, remove those two sections, I'll have eyes, I'll have a nose, and then I chip carve a little section for the mouth, and that's it. It's done. But I can go further and keep refining, keep making these sections under the eyes and nose deeper, keep trying to add more and more details. Sometimes too much is too much and less is more, if that makes sense. These little faces look really great when they're kept nice and simple. They remind me of those old stone carvings that that are found in archaeological digs. Keeping things simple, I want to make sure that it's clean. And that means no little chip marks underneath the eyes. I want a nice clean cut, nice and smooth, no splinters. And that can get a little bit tricky. You have to be gentle on the push and gentle on the slice up towards the push. But before you know it, as you work, you're staring into the face of a weird little weird little wooden man and that's what's cool about this So now he's ready for his mouth, and that's just the tiniest little push cut in with the round part of the knife. And then I'm literally going to chip carve a tiny piece out to give it more definition and character. And it's interesting because I can never really get the mouth perfectly symmetrical. And every time I make one of these little mouths on these totem faces, 
it'll have a different expression. Sometimes they look happy, sometimes they look angry, well, usually they look angry, and sometimes they look a little bit perplexed, so it's interesting. And doing it organically like this, without thinking too much and keeping it simple, they always seem to come out with a different kind of expression. All right, so there he is, looking at you. He's just about done. And that mark again is just about where I'm going to chop off his big chin. So now I'll take it back to my bench clamp and saw it off. There it is. That's all done. I think I should have left a little bit more chin area, but that's perfectly fine. All I did here was clean up the edges and smooth it out, chamfered a little bit, and and now all the carving is done and it's ready to be assembled. That ferrule rod is ready to be glued in, but I do still want to add a little bit of decoration. So that's going to be in the next video, but from here you can see just about what it'll look like once it's all completed if I left it undecorated. So there is one video left, and that will be where I assemble everything, glue in the ferrule rod, and coal rose the handle, and coal rose the totem head just a little bit. After all that is done, make sure it's oiled, make sure everything's tied up, secure, make sure it's exactly how I want it to be as a finished product, and bring it all together. And just want to say, it's so satisfying to make things by hand, is it not? I know I used a power drill. I have a hand drill, of course, just the power drill makes it a lot simpler and a lot easier. Uh, but it's just so great to, to make things completely by hand according to your vision and have it shift and change as you go. And really enjoying sharing the journey of making this handle with you guys. Hope you're getting some benefit out of it. Make sure you subscribe, leave me a comment, drop me a like, you know, all those things YouTubers say. Take care.